Okay, there it is finished. All I've actually done since we last looked at it is let it dry and I've strapped a Nemo motor onto the spindle here to act as a kind of generator. A Nemo motor is what I've got, so if it generates something, that'll be awesome. It's got a rectification circuit on it and a couple of capacitors, so let's see if we can charge those capacitors. If we can charge those capacitors, we can light a light. Now, it is an energy scavenger. So it's done like this because I was watching a thing in Japan where a Japanese engineer had designed something that would use shallow, slow-running water to scavenge energy. And it's all over the place in Japan. They're putting it in drainage ditches to light lampposts. They're putting it in schools for emergency lighting. And I loved that idea. I mean, I generally love that idea anyway, since I think that scavenging energy is always a good idea. I mean, it's great to have the one big plant that will be your answer to all your ills. That's just awesome. But I also think it's important to pay attention to the scavenging possibility around you. Now, water's not something we use a lot of here in England, um, mostly because people don't have water streams on the whole in their land. Mostly here, we have small plots of land without a ready source of water. But a scavenger like this, I would think you could put in a drainage pipe. And if you put it in a rainfall pipe, so you're collecting the rain on your roof, it goes in the downspout, you should be able to scavenge energy from rainfall, which would be particularly cool. So it's not meant to need a huge torrent of water to get it turning really, really quickly and generate a ton of power. It's not the point. The point is to scavenge energy from what is around. I mean, um, turbine screws, they are already using them. You find them in places where they're doing exactly that. They're large things with a big fall of water generating kilowatts of energy. You see that around. This is a scavenger, so it's meant to uh, run small loads. Now, any generating device is going to perform better if you put a generator on that's actually matched to the generating device. Now, I've strapped on a NEMA motor because that's what I've got and I want to see it do something. Anyway, let's take it outside and give it a supply of water. Okay, so maybe chucking a couple of bu buckets of water in there doesn't give you definitive answers for everything you might want, but for me, that was an unqualified success. I'm really chuffed about that. I think it's really excellent. So the idea is you put it in a shallow stream. This is only 15 centimetres. It banks up, rushes down there, and hey, presto, you've got yourself a generator. It's going to scavenge small amounts of electricity for sure. Now, improvements, well, one would be find a stream and stick it in there, obviously. But other improvements would be maybe putting in a double helix, that would work well. Um, obviously matching the generator to the actual machine would be awesome. But I like it that we've been able to make this from basically scrap. I mean, it's made from CDs and expanding foam. If this is the first one you've watched, because you just watched this one because you wanted to see uh, how it worked, and you want to know how it's been built, it's in this playlist. Uh, I show all the details of building it in the playlist, so please feel free to check it out and maybe give one a go yourself. Anyway, I thought it was fascinating, really quite a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed the videos, and thank you very much for watching.